as you can see, I'm an extremely busy man. I have so much work to do taking care of you folks. I've got here in my hand three emails from people with pretty good questions, some of which have been asked before and some of which have not been asked, and I'm going to answer them as soon as I come back. Hey! Oh, rock and cheek. Right, Hello there. So I got three emails this week that I want to answer. I can't tell you who they're from. I'll mention first names only. I got one from Gary. I got one from Stefan. And I got one from Chris. And I'm going to take this time to try to answer these questions and as best as I can. Uh, let's see here. The first one I want to talk about to be short and sweet. Uh, Hi Don, I'd like to thank you for your time and effort in making videos about expat life in Ecuador. I was wondering if Eladel is available in Ecuador. Eladel, that's E-L-I-D-E-L. -E -E Just like you see right here. Eladel. It's some kind of a cream, I think, that's used for something, uh, for eczema or something like that. I don't know. But to answer your question, yes, it is. It is available here. When I finished breakfast this morning, I went straight to the pharmacy right next door because it was like right next door and, and asked them. I went in there and I said, Tienes Eladel Crema. Crema. Don't know if that's right or not, but I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. Uh, but anyway, I showed it to the lady, and she actually even gave me a price. And this seems expensive to me, but it may not be for you. $21.57. So I don't know if that's what you're looking for, Stefan, but that's what I found. You can probably, you know, when you get here, if you're coming here, I assume you're coming here because... You mentioned something here, you're considering Buenos Aires, Aires, Buenos Aires. Um, you can shop around. I mean, you can shop pharmacies like crazy. And the mall has, uh, let's see, there's Cruz Azul, Fibeca, and then Pharmacia, Family Medica, Pharmacia, something like that. That's the one that I stopped in this morning. You can shop around and probably find even a better price than that, okay? Uh, you say that you 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 have been prescribed to it in the UK, and would not like to discontinue use. Also, can you tell me? Could you tell me whether there are any cultural events where you live, such as piano concerts or plays? Really? The, 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 it, listen, there are always cultural events going on in this place. Maybe not like piano concerts and plays. There, you might find more of those in Coenca or Quito, or maybe even Guayaquil. As far as Monte is concerned, I'm not sure about that. But there are always cultural events going on here, always. One way to find out, folks, if you haven't already done so, check into Mark Bradbury's Facebook page. I know some people don't like Facebook, but too bad. You know, we don't have any other source besides me, of course. But... You can, any number of Facebook pages related to living in Ecuador will answer a lot of these questions about, you know, you can, you can get specific information about cultural events like places and times and how much it costs and so forth. Uh, also, how much do you pay for the security concierge in your apartment block? I don't pay anything for it, Chris. It's all, come, I mean, Stephen, it, it comes with the, with the deal. I mean, it's part of the, I think the association the Homeowners Association pays for that. Every building on this block that I live on has guard service 24-7. And I, I, I don't pay it my rent. I mean, I'm sure I do. The landlord that owns my apartment probably pays a fee for it, but it's included in my rent. I've never heard of anybody having to pay extra for it. And I'll tell you something else, folks. The guards that work in these buildings are hard-working guys, you know, and girls, and they don't make a lot of money, okay? I, I help these guys 
as much as I can. And, and, and the way that I help them is I, I give them things to do, and then I give them a couple of dollars, you know, a couple of three dollars. Like, for instance, uh, this is not a guard, but our, um, our, our maintenance guy in this building here, his name is Christian. I have a light that's out in the ceiling. It's an LED light that's implanted in the ceiling. Um, I point it out to him and give him $20 and say, please go down to Mega Kiwi and get me the right light and he knows what to get and come back and put it in for me. And so the last time we did this, he went to Mega Kiwi and got the light for me, came back, Came back up here with a ladder, climbed up there, put the light in for me, tested, make sure it's working. Went to give me my change back and my receipt and everything, and I let him keep the change. Okay, so I gave him a twenty-dollar bill. The light was seven dollars and some change, and I let him have the rest for walking down to make a kiwi, but three blocks away, coming back here, get the ladder, come up here, climb up there, put it in, test it, do all that for me, and. That extra change that he got there fed him lunch for a week. And the guards, a lot of times the guards downstairs here, don't get me wrong, I'm not bragging, but a lot of times when I'm going over to La Novia to get a burger, I'll bring him back one. The guard that's sitting down there who gets up and opens the door for me and, and when they see me coming down the street, they open the gate downstairs for me so I can walk in through the parking garage instead of having to go up the stairs. And, you know, so I returned the paper. I brought him, I bring him a burger and fries and a drink, and they're forever grateful for that. So, and then they get paid. You know, they get a salary for coming here or an hourly pay. But, uh, but that's your answer, Stefan. I hope that helps you. And as usual, as I always tell everybody, if you have any more questions or you want to discuss more, send me an email and we'll talk about it if you want to. You can send me your phone number and I'll call you. I do that with a lot of people, folks. I don't know if you know that or not. I'm not beyond picking up my phone, my Google Voice phone, and calling you from right here in Montana. Don't give me your phone number in the comment section. I had somebody that do that, did that once, and I removed the comment immediately. Then she got mad at me because I removed her comment. But then I said, what? Moron, you put your phone number in the comment section, which is open to the whole world. So don't do that. Send it to me in an email. My email address is in the description, and a lot of times I put it at the bottom of the video, like right here, okay? So, Gary wanted to know, I saw your video about refundable Ecuadorian IVA taxes paid for cedula holders 65 and older. That would be me. I wonder if that happens. I wonder... I don't know if you can hear that. Because I want to keep my viewers informed about everything that's going on. If you hear that. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. So, it's noon. Actually, they're late today because they're 10 minutes late. Every Sunday at noon, the test of the emergency broadcast system goes off here. It's all in Spanish. I remember the first time I heard that, I thought, what in the hell? And it'll be done here in just a second. I don't know if it's coming through. We'll know when we watch the video if it's coming through on the video, but it's very loud. And Okay, we heard you the first three times. Uh, okay, they're done. <laughs> I wonder if that opens up for potential Ecuadorian income tax. No, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I wonder if that opens us up for potential Ecuadorian income tax as will then be registered with SRI. Maybe. Maybe so, maybe no. Here's what I know, okay? Uh, you have to earn a fairly substantial amount of money here before you have to pay income tax. I think it's like 12500 and it's a graduated scale. Um, if you're still paying income tax in the United States, which most of us probably are, uh, there's documentation that you have to, there's two documents that you have to fill out 
And then file with the IRS to let them know that you have bank accounts and blah, 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 and all your stuff here if it exceeds a certain amount of money and value. Uh, I know people are going to ask me about details about that. I've talked about it before in other videos. My best advice to you on that is to, when you come here to open up a bank account, is to be sure and ask the banker that you talk to about that, about the two documents that they will probably file with the IRS. They may or they may not. There's, it's different for different banks and different, different amounts of money and so forth. It's not something that I can comfortably answer, okay? So anyway, this says, this happened to me in a similar situation when I lived in Tunisia, where foreign income and pensions slash U.S. Social Security were taxed for both citizens and residents. You know, folks, I don't really like getting into this discussion because I don't really know enough about it. I can only tell you what I've done. I, I didn't, I have not, I've been here 18 months. I earned money here last year uh, from my CDs, but I didn't earn enough to have to even report to the Ecuadorian government other than what was probably already reported. Um, I, I had to lump it with my Social Security and my YouTube income, and I had to lump it all together, and I paid income tax on all of it to uh, the good old U.S. of A. So, as you know, I don't like to give advice my best advice. In this case, the advice that I will give you is to talk to a tax professional in Ecuador. There's plenty of them here. You can find them here. If you want me to find some for you, send me a note, drop something in the description, and I'll get some tax professionals names and phone numbers and websites or whatever, and I'll provide them for you. Okay? But, Gary, to answer your question, I don't think this is going to be anything that you're going to have to worry about unless you have a lot of money and you're going to make a lot of money here. Also, the United States, from my understanding, you know, they have this anti-double taxation law that if you pay income tax here, uh, you won't have to pay on it there or the other way around. Again, I don't want to get into this discussion because I'm not an expert on this. I can only tell you what I think and what I've had to do. Gary went on to say, I did an internet search about foreign income and the posts were old stating foreign income is not taxed. I'll check with an Ecuadorian tax accountant to see if that regulation still applies. And we all know that laws and regulations here are the flavor of the day. That is the truth. You never know from day to day what the law is going to be here. I just heard yesterday that uh, minimum wage went up to $450 a month. I saw it on one article in Gringo, not Gringo, my paper that I follow in Cuenca, there. Okay, the next guy, Chris. Chris asked me like 10 questions here, and I'm going to go through these uh, not as quickly as possible, but, but I'm going to try to be as brief as I can and still answer your questions, Chris. Long-time subscriber here. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. You never know. Chris. I know a Chris here that's a female. I know a Chris in the United States that's a male. So anyway, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I visited Ecuador last December, and I had a great time except for the driving part. I'm a professional commercial driver. <laughs> Boy, there's thousands of those here. <laughs> but this was like... Being in an NASCAR race, you recommended not driving to visitors at that time, but of course, I didn't listen. Anyway, if you're buying a car there, I rented, watch out for cheap pot metal rims on the tires and totally inadequate tire change kits. Okay, well, I am going to buy a car here. I'm going to buy a car here within the next couple of weeks. As soon as my driver's license is in my hand, then I'm going to go and buy a car. Don't know what I'm going to get, but I'm not going to buy the cheapy Chinese car, I don't think. 
and I'll take you for your word on this, Chris, about the cheap <laughs> tire chains kits and pop metal rims. I guess the best way to stop from damaging pop metal rims is stay out of those potholes. That's going to be a real challenge because there's some of these highways around here, nothing but potholes. You look down the highway and you see cars doing this number. And they're all dodging potholes. So, I'm staying in Cuenca for one month at a place where you gave a good review. I figured if Grumpy Don gave this place a good review, how could I go wrong? I'll finish the last parts of my two-part, two-year visa process and get my cedula. Then move to San Clemente for a month to scope out long-term rentals on the coast. I, uh... Chris, I'm, I'm just going to just come right off the bat and tell you, unless you know somebody in San Clemente, I, I would come to Monta. And then you can check out Crucita, San Clemente, Bahia, um, Canoa, all those beaches up to the north. And then you can also check the beaches down to the south, um, San Lorenzo, go down to Olón, you know. If you go, if you come to Monte, you can, you know, look at both ways. But maybe you already have something in San Clemente. The last time I went to San Clemente, I wasn't too impressed by what I saw. That doesn't mean that's a bad place, but, you know, I didn't, I wasn't impressed by what I saw. So, some questions first, if you don't mind. Number one question. The last I heard about the new airport in Monte was an opening date of December 6th. Have you heard anything? No. I, I've heard so many different opening dates for the airport that I gave up on trying to figure it out. I don't know. I am in touch with a gentleman that is the president and CEO of the new Equatoriana Airlines that's going to be coming here. I thought they were going to be up and running in June, but I've had a couple talks with this gentleman since then, and super nice guy, by the way, and... Uh, He's just now buying airplanes, and he's still getting seed money put together and investment money. He's, he's, I don't know, he's finalizing everything and getting it ready. But, I mean, as far as I know, he's definitely going to open up the airline. Here's going to be a regional carrier. and But as far as, like, the, the airport is open now. You can take flights out of the Monte Airport here now and go to Quito. And I think that's about it. Maybe some other places, but, you know, man, I tell you, you can't depend on anything you hear. That's one thing. If I was going to do a, a bad news, bad bad things about Ecuador video, which I'm not going to do, um, one of the top of the list would be getting information, <laughs> getting correct information. Number two, when you first came here to stay, what would you have left behind? I'll show you what I would have left behind. This stuff. I have, sitting here, I have several thousand dollars worth of camera gear that I brought that I would have just left in the States. And I'll be brutally honest and tell you why I would have left it behind. Because I don't take this stuff out of this apartment. Sorry, folks. I'm too scared to walk around Monta uh, with $10,000 worth of camera gear. Um, anything could happen. I could fall on one of these pathetic sidewalks here. I could be walking, I could just see me walking down the street here. There's a sidewalk right across the street from the mall with an eye bolt sticking out of it sticks up about that high, right out of the concrete. I could just see me with my, I got one, this camera body and one lens that's about eight grand. I could just see me carrying that over my shoulder on that sidewalk and hitting that eye bolt sticking out of there and falling to the ground with that camera and that lens hanging off of it. Not gonna happen, folks, it's not gonna happen because I'm not going to give it an opportunity to happen. Now, when I get my car, I'm going to leave this city to go do photography work, and I'll carry my gear with me because I'll have it locked up in my car. 
I'll take it out where I need it and get back in, lock it back up in the car. And I won't be carrying it around on sidewalks of Monta. There's some great sidewalks here, but I've got to tell you, 90% of the sidewalks in this city are not safe to walk on. You'd be better off to walk in the street and just dodge the cars. Number three, I know about large size shoes, clothes, and electronics, but is there anything else you regret not taking? Well, yeah, I mean, other shoes and sh shirts. I, I'm 6'1", 235. I'm cons I wear 2X shirts and I wear a size 13 shoes. I'm kind of fat around the midsection, I guess. I'd say I am. Some people say I'm not. But, you know, I can't find pants and shorts and shirts here that fit me. I'm sure there's some here somewhere, but I can't find them. I get all my clothes and shoes, even my socks, from Amazon, and I have somebody bring them to me or I get them shipped by Amazon Direct. I can't think of anything other than that. When you come here, especially when you come here to start off, uh, you want to come with as minimal of things as you can. Because let me tell you something, folks, the honeymoon doesn't last that long. If you know what I mean. And you don't want to pack and pack and pack to come and go. So, number four, let's see, number four, are DJI products available here? For those of you that don't know, DJI, they, I, the drone that I have is a DJI drone. The microphone system that I'm speaking on here that's attached to my shirt, you'll see is DJI. Uh, I don't know that it's available here. I've not seen it in any store. I think this stuff is probably a little bit uh, higher end than a lot of the electronics and stuff that you'll find here. I remember when I was in Cuenca, I was in the mall, the big mall there. Here's the name of it right here. They, I saw a GoPro 10 in there. That was probably, uh, in terms of multimedia and photography stuff, probably the most high-end GoPro system I saw in Ecuador, period. It's hard to find high-end electronics and stuff like that here. Now, I get all this stuff comes from the States. I have people bring it in for me. I have a DJI gimbal set up for my phone that I never use, that I paid 400 bucks for, never use it. I'm, I'm really good at wasting money. Uh, number five, have you seen any larger ADV bikes? I don't know what you mean by ADV. Apple David Victor bikes, 650cc or larger, available there. Sure they are. I saw a KTM here in a building here not too long ago. It was, I think it was a 900cc bike. I saw a, I don't know what it was, a bike, just this morning I saw a motorcycle go by when I was crossing the Malacon, four-cylinder. No. Really fast and really loud. So, yes, they are. But, you know, you're not going to find... Kawasaki and Suzuki, you know, sport bikes here. <laughs> Honda, I mean, you're not going to find that here. Maybe in Quito. I think I understand you can get Harley Davidsons in Quito. Can't imagine what they would cost here. Oh my lord. Uh, number six. Does Mega Maxi take debit cards? Yes, they do. Uh, number seven. You say you have ported your U.S. phone number there. If so, do you still get spam calls on it? Okay, here we go with this porting phone numbers and stuff. Probably this goes back to Google Voice, okay? I, folks, I, I talk so much about Google Voice and porting phone numbers and all this stuff. And I'm not saying this about you, Chris, but so many people just don't get it. When I talk about porting your phone number over, to, you, you don't port your phone number to Ecuador. You port it to a, a voice over IP service. That's what Google Voice is, like Magic Jack. You know, if those of you that know what Magic Jack is, and I got a wild hair in my glasses. And I didn't know glasses could grow hair. But anyway, 
You, you don't, I mean, you, you, I, I, yes, I do get the spam calls. I mean, my phone number in the United States was ported to Google Voice in the United States. I always tell everybody, you, you, don't, you don't port to another country. And folks, don't come to Ecuador and then try to port your phone number over because you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to have trouble doing it. You got to do all this. I'm not going to turn this into a Google Voice discussion, all right? We can, if anybody wants elaborate details about Google Voice, send me an email, give me your phone number, and I'll call you on Google Voice, all right? And we'll talk about it. But no, yeah, you're right. I mean, I log, I don't keep, that's, this is one of the reasons, Chris, why I don't keep Google Voice on my phone. I don't, I don't want those spam calls coming in on my phone. I get I get the same amount of spam calls on my Google Voice phone. And the reason why is because it's the same phone number that I've had for the last 13 years in Arizona. And when I log in, when I take my computer and log into a Google Voice, I see all those spam calls. So that's why I don't want it on my phone, because I don't want to be I don't want to be notified when I'm getting those calls. So yeah, to answer your question, yeah. I still get the spam calls, absolutely. Number eight, I have heard Google Fi is a good temporary carrier to get me through the airports until I can get a Claro account in Ecuador. Do you know anything about this? I know very little about Google Fi other than the fact that it costs you money. I don't see any sense in it, you know, because, I mean, here's what I did, folks. I'm not telling you to do this, but here's what I did. I came into Ecuador and the first order of business for me, the very first day that I was here in Monta, was I went to Claro and got a local SIM card for my unlocked phone. Let me say that again. I went to Claro and bought a, subscribed to a Claro phone service, a plan, it cost me $23.59 a month, an unlimited data and everything, and I put that SIM card in my unlocked phone immediately, and then I tied it to my WhatsApp. That's all you need to do. Don't, I didn't subscribe to Google Fi. Why pay 20 cents a minute for a phone call? I, I don't see any sense in that. I get all the phone calls and all, I have all, all the communication needs I need with my local phone and WhatsApp. I notice that a lot of people come here and don't have WhatsApp. That's, maybe I should do a separate video about WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a very necessary tool that you need on your phone when you're here. It's not real popular in the United States, but it's popular everywhere else in the world. And you need it, you really need it. You will use it. I hardly ever, I hardly ever make a phone call on this thing. When I do, it's through WhatsApp. I don't do it through my Claro account. The only reason why I have Claro is for the data plan, and you have to have a phone number to tie to WhatsApp. And no, I'm not going to tie my Google voice number to it. Okay. That was number eight. Number nine, what is the best online resource for learning how to port my home phone number to Ecuador? Here we go again. You don't port your phone number to Ecuador. Okay, Chris, you understand? You don't port your phone number to Ecuador. You port your phone number to Google Voice. Google Voice is a voice over IP service. It's free. Well, I'm sorry. It, you have to pay a $20 fee to port your phone number so you can keep your phone number. You can go to Google Voice and get a phone number and not have to pay anything. But to keep your old phone number from that you had in the States... When you, before you close it, your account there, port that number over to Google Voice, pay the $20 fee, and then you have that phone number as a voice over IP phone number for as long as you want it. Number 10, do you have any experience with TurboTax online there? Yes, of course I do. I use it to do my taxes. I think I had to be on my VPN, but I do, doing taxes and anything financial, I'm on my VPN anyway because I want that point-to-point -point telling phone call security. You know, it's data encryption from point to point. So, that's another thing, folks. Get a VPN. So, thanks in advance for your help with these questions, and if you would like to use this email in a video, please use my first name only. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Okay, 
Okay, Chris, that's it. I hope I answer your questions. And like I tell the other two guys, if you have any more that you want to ask, feel free to send me an email. Send me your phone number if you have, want to, and I'll call you, and we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. And we can talk for as long as you want to. Okay? Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. I know that some of you do. Some of you don't listen to a damn thing I say. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, hit that like up, that like button, okay? And if you don't like it, hit the like down button and then bite me. And that's it for now. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to defend yourself if your mom ever comes swinging at you with a sandal. This right here is my brother, he's going to be playing my mom. So let's say you did something wrong, right? And she swings at you, pop! Now you have wrist control. What you want to do now is move the trajectory of the sandal away from your face and then pivot inward. From here, you can either break her arm. What I like to do is turn it around, pop! Now she's disarmed and you have full control. Hey! Show me. Okay guys, um, this is my actual mom. Uh, let's do this one more time. So let's say she swings at you, right? 